Praise the Lord and God bless you. Uh, my name is Trevor Pope. Uh, I pray that all is well with you out there on this weekend, this resurrection weekend, uh, the weekend that we celebrate the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, I just wanted to share a couple scriptures with you uh, this weekend, if you don't mind. Uh, my thought is going to be coming out of the book of Luke chapter 23, the book of Luke chapter 23, verses 33 and 34, for those of you who would like to follow me uh, in your Bible. And the scripture reads as follows, Luke 23, 33 and 34. It says, and when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, speaking of Jesus, and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Uh, I would like to take my thought from that 34th verse when Jesus said, Father, forgive them. And we know that Jesus, you know, he was, he was awesome in, in being able to say that in the time that he was in, in, in the pain that he was going through. But we know, uh, uh, those of us that are saved, know that he did it all for us. But I want to ask a question. Uh, can we say, Father, forgive them? Can, can we have this same type of compassion for others that do us wrong or, or that they would like to see us hurt? or killed or or, or, or or just doing bad. And I, and I want to go through this process that Jesus went through, starting in the 33rd verse. It says, And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary. Now it says that they came to a place. And when we look at that, we can look in our own lives and understand that we come to certain places in our lives. But particularly here it says they came to a place called Calvary. Now, uh, Calvary was also called the place of the skull, or, or in the Hebrew it's called Golgotha. And the word Golgotha means an experience or occasion of extreme suffering, especially mental suffering, a place of sacrifice. And it says there they crucified him. The word crucify means to put to death by nailing or binding the hands and feet to a cross. Here's another definition. To treat with gross injustice, persecute, torment, or torture. And how many know that in our lives today, sometimes we come to a place where we, we deal with uh, mental suffering and extreme suffering where we feel like we've been treated with gross injustice uh, at the hands of others. Uh, but I want to ask you a question today. Can you say, Father, forgive them? Uh, some of you may have already come to that place. Some of you may be at that place now. Some of you may be coming to that place. But I'm here to let you know that you will come to a place in your life that is going to be similar to uh, the uh, Golgotha that Jesus was experiencing. Of course, not the same thing and not in a physical way, but it can be in a spiritual way. It can be in a mental way. And, and I just want to ask the question, uh, can you say, Father, forgive them? And, and you say, why do I ask that? You know, why is it important for me to forgive somebody that's done me wrong? Somebody that, uh, 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 you know, that I trusted or, you know, Jesus trusted a lot of these people. And then for them to turn on him, you know, it had to be hard. But there was something that Jesus understood. He says, Father, forgive them. Let us turn to Matthew 18. Matthew 18. And we're going to look at what Jesus says about forgiveness and then it better help us to understand his situation and why it is that we need to be forgiven Matthew 18 and uh, let us start in hmm the uh, 21st verse Matthew 18 and 21 it says then came Peter to him speaking of Jesus and said Lord how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times. Peter says, listen, if my brother sins against me, how many times should I forgive him? Ah, Jesus, maybe seven. Jesus goes on to say, I say not unto thee 
until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Jesus said, listen, no, not seven times. You need to forgive him 70 times seven. And what was he trying to say to Peter? Basically, he was telling Peter, listen, you need to forgive your brother as often as as you can, as much as possible. There shouldn't be no excuse for you not to forgive your brother or your sister. I don't care what they did for you. He said, listen, there is no limit on it. You should be forgiving them 70 times 70. And how many know we, we nobody's going to do us that wrong that many times uh, uh, as an individual. But Jesus was letting them know, listen, it should be pretty much limitless, your forgiveness uh, uh, when it comes to others. But listen to what Jesus goes on to say. Verse 23, uh, Matthew 18 and 23, it says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king. Jesus begins to tell Peter a parable. He says, Which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Now Jesus is talking about a king that he went through his accounts and would check on the people who owed him. And it said that there was a man that owed him 10,000 talents. Now let me help you to understand that 10,000 talents in our day and time, modern day and time, is in the millions of dollars. So this man owes the king millions of dollars. Let's just go on and see what the story says. It says, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. So now the king's ready to sell him, his wife, his children, everything in order for the debt to be paid until it was paid. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. So the Lord, he, so, so the Lord, he, he, he got compassion on the man. Not only did he allow him time to pay the debt, he said, you know what? I'm not even going to make you pay it anymore. I, you moved by you asking me to forgive you and move my heart and I'm going to wipe the slate completely clean. So he went above and beyond what the what his uh, servant had asked him to do, what the uh, man that owed him had asked him to do. And how many know the Bible tells us about Jesus, about our Lord, about our God? It says that um, he does exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. In other words, ask or imagine. So this young man would have never imagined that he would have been forgiven the whole debt. But this is how good God is. This is the type of things that God does for us. It says, but the same servant went out, the same guy went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Now you have to understand a hundred pence is only thousands of dollars. Now remember he owed millions, but now the guy that he's run into owes him a few thousand. And it says, and he laid hands on him. And, and, and it wasn't praying, y'all. <laughs> and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave, thee, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desiredest me, because you asked me. I forgave all of it. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise, this is, listen what Jesus ends this with. He says, so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Now we have to understand when we look at this story, this young man, you know, he was wrong for what he had done. The Lord had forgave him all 
His Lord had forgave him all the debt, the millions of dollars that he owed. He runs into a fellow servant that owes him a measly few thousands of dollars and he throws him into prison. He didn't have the same compassion that the Lord had on him. And, and what Jesus was saying here was, listen, the debt that he forgave us for, the, the reason why we're celebrating this week and how he laid down his life, the price that he paid for us, we could never pay it back. In other words, we don't have a right not to forgive someone else after all that he has forgiven us for. Let's just think about all the things that God has forgiven us for, all the things that we do every day in this life, saved, not saved. It, 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 I mean, if we had to pay that back, it would be impossible. And it was the same here with this situation. It was millions compared to thousands, but he could not let it go. And what Jesus is letting them know in this story that if you can't forgive your brother, then our Father in heaven can't forgive you. Why? Because you've done way much more to God than one person has done to you. You may say, oh, you don't understand what this person did to me, but you lie. You, you compare that to what you've done to God and the negative and the sin that you've done in this life. It, it, just, it just doesn't compare. So what Jesus is saying is we don't have a right not to forgive our brothers and sisters. We don't, we don't have that right. We should forgive everyone that has done us wrong. And let's go back to Luke and see what Jesus said. Because he said two things. He says, Father, forgive them. And then he goes on to say, for they know not what they do. And somebody out here, you might be saying, listen, okay, I can get with the, with the I do need to forgive them part. But for you to say that they not know what they do, they didn't know what they were doing, I know for a fact that they knew what they were doing. You know, how, how could Jesus say that he had to know what they were doing? Uh, 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 they was they was purposely uh, crucifying him. They purposely purposely uh, said, you know, release uh, Barabbas and, and crucify Jesus. And, and it's just like how Jesus saw it. I see it. The person has done me wrong. They've purposely done it. They probably planned it. They probably uh, had it in the works. They was probably trying to figure out what's the best way to get me. But I want you to understand something. Yes, people may know what they're doing. They may, uh, you know, they, they, they may have it out for you like they had it out for Jesus. But Jesus, he was saying it in a deeper sense. It was spiritual. He said, listen, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because some people, they could be doing you wrong and thinking that they're getting away with it or thinking that this is the best thing to do. But they might not understand that this can help can come to benefit them down the road. Some might say, well, I, well, how's that possible? Let's think about the story of Joseph and his brothers. The Bible said that when they seen Joseph coming, they said, here come this dreamer now. Let's kill him and see what become of his dreams. And the Bible said that they threw him in a pit. You know, that they threw him in a pit and then dragged him out of the pit and sold him into slavery. And he went through so many changes. He went to jail. He was thrown in jail for fake uh, 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 accusations of rape. You know, he just went through so much. But God eventually delivered him out of that prison and he became the second ruler of all Egypt. And the Bible says that he ends up having another encounter with his brothers later on uh, when they came to the land of Egypt to be fed because there was a great famine in the land. And the Bible says that they came and they reckoned themselves with Joseph and then their father Jacob had died. And after their father Jacob died, they said, oh, man, we know that. Joseph, he's going to um, he's gonna really get us now. Our father's gone. There's nobody to protect us. But listen to what Joseph says to them in Genesis 50, 19 and 22. It says, And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. What Joseph was saying is like, listen, what y'all did, you did it and you meant it for evil. But God turned it around and meant it for good. He said, because he put me in a position to save your lives years later. You didn't know this. I didn't know this. He says, now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. 
So what I'm trying to explain to you is, yes, somebody may be doing you wrong right now, and it may feel like it's unforgivable, but you don't know how God is going to use what they've done to you to be a blessing to them down the road. And some of you may say, well, listen, I don't want them to be blessed down the road. But sometimes God likes to use our lives as a testimony. Sometimes people need to see the wrong that they've done by the love that we show them in spite of what they've done wrong. Amen. It's not about us. This is not about us. This is about uh, uh, showing forgiveness, forgiving them the same way he forgave us. If, if God uh, held us to the standard of, of, of the things that we've done to him, none of us would be alive. But how many know if we go to God boldly and say, God, forgive me, God forgives us. No questions asked. The Bible says that he takes that sin and he throws it in the sea of forgetfulness, never to go fishing for it again. It's over and done with. And God said, that's what we need to do for our fellow brothers and sisters. But how many know sometimes we don't we can't see down the road. We don't see that there's a deeper plan in forgiving one another. So just remember that one person that done you wrong. You know, God may want you to forgive them and he'll deal with their heart. And, and maybe you can turn around and be a blessing to them down the road and they can be a blessing to you. Because see, his brothers, by Joseph having this attitude, his brothers saw Christ. They saw what the mercy of God is really about because they did him dirty. They did him wrong. But thank God that he had forgiveness in his heart because he was able to fulfill the purpose that God had for his life. He was able to, to, to be the second ruler of all Egypt, be blessed with a wife, blessed. He was just blessed beyond his imagination. Why? Because he had forgiveness in his heart. He was able to forgive how, how God has forgiven us. Amen. And uh, one more point that I wanted to make. Let's look in the book of Job and we'll be closing over there. The book of Job. But I hope somebody's getting this out there. Forgiveness, we're dealing with forgiveness. Because forgiveness is so powerful, it's, you know, it's, it's it, you know, forgiveness robs a lot of us, unforgiveness robs a lot of us of, um, you know, of getting to the place where we need to be. Because sometimes holding on to unforgiveness could keep bitterness in your heart, it can keep you holding on to a grudge. Somebody may have passed away 10, 15 years ago, we're still holding on to something that they've done to us. And it's hindering us from getting to the place where God would have us to get to. But let us read in the book of Job. And uh, we're going to be looking at Job 42. Um, let's start in. Let's start in the seven verse. Amen. Seven verse 40, Job 42 and seven. It says, and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. Now you have to understand that these were some of Job's friends. And when Job was going through his turmoil, he was going through what he was going through. You know, they were speaking negative about him, against him, about God. And it says, therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams. And now God is telling them to do these things and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. Now understand, these are the ones that was doing him wrong all this time, speaking against him. God says, listen, bring a burnt offer to, offering to him and Job is going to pray for you. It says, for him will I accept. In other words, God said, only thing, only thing that's going to help you all is Job praying for you. That, that's what I'm going to accept on your behalf for what you've done. He says, lest I deal with you after your folly. If you don't pray for you, I'm going to deal with you. And that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Namathite went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, there's a couple keys here. God tells them, listen, take this burnt offering to Job. And he's going to pray for you. Only his prayer will I accept on your behalf, unless I will have to deal with you. And the Bible says that when they went and did this, that Job prayed for them. But watch this. 
it says that after Job prayed for him, the Lord turned his captivity around. The situation that he was in, the Lord turned it around. He had lost everything, his family, uh, 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 his, his livestock, uh, animals, just everything. It was just destroyed. It was gone. Uh, for those of you that don't know the story, you're welcome to go back and read Job chapter 1. Read through it. Awesome story, the story of Job. But he had lost everything. But it says when he prayed for the ones that was talking and speaking wrong about him and doing him dirty. It says that's when God turned his captivity around. So what does that teach us? That sometimes holding on to unforgiveness could be hindering us from going to the next level or from God blessing us with some things that he want to bless us with. So that's why it's important this weekend to think about what Jesus has done for us. Amen. And think about how he forgave us all, how he went to the cross and died for us, laid down his life, amen, for our sins. Something that he was guilty, he was not guilty of. He had nothing to do with it. He was without sin, but he laid down his life for us. He forgave us of everything. God cleared the debt. Amen. If you if you uh, 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 are going through something or you've done some wrong in God's eyes, God is so faithful that you can go to him right now and say, Lord, forgive me. And he would forgive you. So God says, that's what I expect you to do to your fellow brothers and sisters. Forgive them. I don't care what they've done to you. If you got to stay away from them for a while, do that. But you need to forgive them because if you don't forgive them, I cannot forgive you. Amen. And that's the word I wanted to share with you tonight. Just remember this. You know, when you come to that place, remember what Jesus did when he came to that place and how he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because remember, we said you don't know how you're going to be a blessing to that person that did you wrong down the road because God may deal with their heart and may be dealing with their heart. And we don't know if, if God is trying to get something to us that unforgiveness is holding back. Amen. And uh, for those of you that are struggling with unforgiveness, there's somebody that may have done you wrong, I want to pray with you right now. Just bow your head with me. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, wow, we just come to you uh, as humble as we know how, and we just ask, God, we're touching and agreeing for you setting your word with two or my, more, excuse me, touch and agree, asking anything in your name, it shall be done. And I am touching and agreeing for my brother, my sister, that you will help them to forgive that person that has done them wrong, God, that they will give it to you right now in the name of Jesus and let it go, God, and allow you to just fill their heart with love, allow you to help them to get over this process get through this process God so that you can take them higher and take them and show them the things that you will have for them and want to do in their lives God we just thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus we give you the glory the honor and the praise we thank you for what your son has done for us by coming down and laying down his life being the perfect sacrifice for us in the name of Jesus we thank you we love you we claim it done right now in Jesus name amen Amen. Amen. It's all about forgiveness. Amen. It's all about forgiveness. If you're out there, I feel that if you are out there and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you just watched this video, you said, listen, I hear what you're talking about, but I've never committed my life to Christ. I've never uh, uh, made that uh, commitment or that step. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Father God, I come to you as humbly as I know how. God, I am a sinner. And I ask that you forgive me, Lord, for you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Christ from the dead, that I shall be saved. God, I believe that on today. And I am confessing with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. So, Father, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to accept me. I'm tired of running with the ball in my life. By faith, I am forgiven. By faith, I am saved. And by faith, without a shadow of a doubt, I know that my name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I love you, God. I thank you. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
Know that you have made the greatest decision of your life on today. And that, uh, you know, God, he's so faithful. You know, th this is the greatest decision that you could have made because God is so awesome. He's so faithful. Amen. Everything that you asked him to forgive you of, the Bible says he took that and he threw it in the sea of forgetfulness. It's not about emotion. Uh, if you didn't cry, don't think that you didn't get none. Some people may cry. If you didn't clap, you didn't jump up and down. Listen, it's not about emotion. It's about knowing in your heart. It's about having faith in God and knowing that he heard your prayer on tonight. If you don't have a church home, tomorrow is one of the greatest days to get to church. Tomorrow is one of the greatest days to get to church. If you uh, end up watching this video later on, well, you get to church as soon as you can. The next day you find out a church service is somewhere in your area, you get there. But I want you to know that Jesus loves you. And when you get there, let him know, listen, I've been saved. I gave my heart to God and I need help. I need a Bible. Whatever you need, you get to that place, uh, to that church. And you let them know that you've made this decision on tonight. Amen. That you made Jesus your Lord and Savior. And if you need a Bible, you can't get one where you are. You can call us. Our hotline number is 203-522-7409. That's 203-522-7409. Know that I love you, God bless you, and you be encouraged. And know that Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless.